Okay, back there. Okay, so uh, sorry for the late. Uh, we have some technical issues. So uh, let's start it. So uh, welcome everyone. This is the heat team session, one of the heating sessions. And just reminding, we also have other like uh, other two heat sessions. So uh, if you have like to happen to like have interest with heat, so don't miss it. Uh, so this this session is about uh, project update of HIT, and uh, I'm uh, recalling from AZ Stake. I'm the PTL of the uh, PICAR release, and Zen Peter from Red Hat, and also the uh, uh, PTL for the Juno release. And I like to remind you, we also have uh, the other. We also we have totally like 100 and 102 developer. Uh, for to contribute at the uh, Okata release, so that is for like recognition of those names. Uh, if your names are not on top and you have like review or email, we also thank you very much as well. Then and that uh, we can do more uh, more recognition next time. But just for thank everyone. So uh, we start to update uh, project update. The first thing is that we like to update our goal, like. Actually, like present our goal to uh, everyone. So the goal, the the goal used to writing on the uh, wiki page for heat is about. Uh, we like to say uh, we always trying to do is like uh, to create a human and machine accessible uh, services. So uh, uh, is a uh, to manage your life cycle uh, of your applications. And recently, like uh, Zen has proposed for the government's uh, uh, open state policy about uh, we should do more to care about everyone's like uh, applications, whatever the scale is. Uh, so there's like uh, like uh, for care like overall cloud, not just in one project, right? Uh, he doesn't survive by its own. He is one of the project, and and. So in it means that uh, what we care is about the automatic or the scalable is uh, sta uh, like stable and what you really feel comfortable about putting your applications or the infrastructure of your applications rely on heat to 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 doing your job and make it like let his job. So like you, you only care about your applications, and we should, we should make it that way. So let, let in terms of that, that's our goal. And, and uh, before we start to like update what's the news, I would like to like show uh, briefly introduce what is uh, HIT. So HIT is a uh, orchestration services of OpenStack. Basically, we we manage your OpenStack uh, resources. Like you probably have entire days to hear, heard about uh, instance in Nova, uh, balance in Singer, and he is he trying to uh, manage those services in and try to orchestrate those services and uh, to manage their life cycle. And we can even include like managing the applications on top of those services. And uh, he architecture you can see like you put in a YAML file. Which you, you like talking, uh, telling the hit about? I want uh, 100 Nova services, and with like uh, what kind of neutron? Even like I want some extra like out like Kubernetes or any kind of thing. I want it to deploy to those bare metal to those uh, or to those uh, virtual machines, and he can do it. That's what our purpose and the, the, user, fa the user interface to will. Will help to call uh, our REST APIs. Our, our REST API services will call heat uh, backend, and heat backend will actually call the clients. And we, we will do more detail on the onboarding uh, sessions. So we, we just briefly talk about it. And now we, we know about uh, architecture, and we start to talk about uh, what 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 we trying to achieve to the goals and how we are achieving it, right? So. On the way, what we do is that we have uh, implement uh, like uh, for new resource type uh, in uh, Newton and uh, like uh, 22 complete blueprints. And in Okata, we have 11 new resource type uh, implemented and uh, 10 blueprints, which is already a very incredible number. 
because Okata is a, a relatively, rel relevantly short release. And uh, we also have like done in Pika one, which is uh, which is uh, like uh, released at the April. Uh, we have three more resource, uh, resource type. Also, uh, we have a uh, complete blueprint. So as an update, we would like to say uh, we are in good shape, and uh, we have we have uh, a lot of uh, developing under work, which we will introduce later. And to talk about uh, those new resource type, um, which you might be interesting because right now you're probably using not, I, I don't think you're going to using Okata right now, not good high, not high chances. So you're probably using like uh, Liberty, uh, Mitaka. So you, uh, and you're facing like uh, going to upgrade your, your uh, environment and those are resources that you can uh, considering to, to manage by heat, which is uh, already possible. And uh, in from Newton, we have like Moloska, Singers, uh, QS, and also uh, Okata. There's like uh, Nova Keystone, Sahara Newton, uh, Destinate, also A, and uh, the Zakhar. Uh, and we also deprecate the uh, Destinate for, uh, for uh, it just version replace. And there's also an uh, OS Glance uh, image. So, uh, we deprecate glass image because it kind of creates some burdens for uh, heat uh, engines. But uh, we right now we haven't uh, uh, find a, a solutions for uh, like like over the uh, glass images. So we even though we deprecate it, you're still capable to use it. So uh, uh, so don't worry that uh, much. And in uh, Pika, we also have like uh, Magnum clusters and. Uh, Newton, uh, some Newton resource under developing. Oh, sorry. And maybe there will be like freezer zone or even possible ironic. Some of that is right now currently under uh, uh, developing. So uh, uh, might be chances. So uh, we update some of the resource type which you might be interesting. And how, uh, you can use in the orchestrate, uh, open set orchestrate uh, resource type list to, to figure out what kind of resource type you already can capable to use. And those resource type uh, you fit in within the YAML, temp YAML uh, the template, which will actually generate exactly resource you needed. So uh, you might be surprised to, to look at your uh, resource type list and you might, uh, you might find some new ideas how to manage your clouds, uh, maybe put it inside of heat resource uh, hit uh, template will be a good idea. Uh, that's what we're trying to push here to, to make make every, uh, everybody use, try to using hit, and so try it. And uh, uh, for re for each release, that uh, a tradition that we will have uh, a new template versions which will contain new uh, new functions. Uh, those functions are. Uh, we we avoid like uh, projects like like projects or, or users trying to using a heat template but but be but being break. So uh, right now we have like a uh, Newton Okata and Pika release template version. And it also have the uh, uh, the other like uh, names of like uh, like 2017 uh, dash. Some some months uh, kind of forgot, but the, but that's the name that uh, I I don't I don't think you guys want to remember it. I, I don't think you can you guys can remember it. So how about you just remember like uh, heat uh, template version Pika Okata. So that's an easy name. And for the function releases that uh, we have done a lot of new function logic. Uh, you can list here. You can see the list here. So a lot of function logic is kind of like. Uh, a good chance that you you can go back to to see your template, and you might be find some uh, useful one that to to imply to imply those logic into your current template to make it like uh, work more smartly, right? And uh, uh, those those functions are uh, some of the new functions in the Pika release are still uh, underworking, but basically for Okata and Newtons that is already stable. 
uh, we think it's also, also, we think it, it is stable, so it depends on the, all the users to to report, right? But our tests showing that that is all uh, very stable thing. So uh, feel free to try it. It will definitely surprise you in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and also that uh, right now we have uh, supporting Tempest. Uh, you can you can using the Tempest to to run a lot of uh, tests, which is actually going inside your environment to do a lot of tests. And all those tests are actually running every day by day in uh, our upstream gate and jobs. So, uh, in case some user may may try to uh, uh, like developing their own, uh, that's our support is that you right now can uh, using Tempest to to uh, to run the entire test, and there's uh, some step that you, you can you need to apply before you actually using the uh, tempest command, which is very easy steps, uh, very easy uh, steps. So uh, you can check out on the uh, the Git link, the integration to see some readme. And so uh, there's a lot another another update is about uh, convergence. So convergence is actually not new developed out. From Okata cycle, but we like to keep mentioning it out because that is like uh, we very uh, recommend uh, for a user developer or a operator to apply it uh, because the convergence is uh, for us is like the very smart and new generation of the heat stake. And what is convergence ensured is about like for example, I have a I have a Kubernetes cluster and look like. Uh, the, the, the size of like up, they probably like, you have a, a template to become a stake, right? And inside the template, you have, you have like, uh, those are the Kubernetes minion, minion nodes, those are the master nodes. So the, the green thing is about your resource, like each one, like this one is a Nova server, that one is a, is a glance image, and let's like depend on each other, so let's uh, image it to show, to demonstrate. And uh, on the bottom left side, uh, it's the, uh, we like to call it like legacy stake, which probably is the one that you're using when you like using the old version, like Juno version or other version. Uh, that stake will be when you put in the resources and the, the friend is uh, represent like a heat backend engine, uh, just a single heat back engine. So that engine is actually going to Accept your entire resource tree, and and do the job by its own. If, uh, even when you have like a, a very usable HA, a usable HA environment, that still be the case for the legacy stake. So it will do its own unless there's a nasty stake. You will separate by stakes, and in this case, even this, even the, even so, only just two engine. And at the right side, there is a, I would like to say, the convergence mode, uh, which we will talk about more detail in the uh, 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 onboarding session. But in short, it just it's possible that right now that you can separate to uh, like separate your entire uh, uh, stake template, like to to the entire uh, of your heat clusters and those all the engines. Will accept uh, like accept like single resource and and help you help you like deploy the entire thing very parallelly, so it would definitely improve your perform your, your uh, environment performance uh, if you have like more than two controller nodes. So definitely we hope the user try to use it, and if you using like uh, I think it's from Mitaka, and you didn't. Like you didn't give any config, say no, I don't want convergence. So it would default to be your uh, services. Newton. Newton. Okay. Yeah. Newton. So it would default be your services in uh, from Newton release. So if you have Newton release, you, you say I don't, I don't say I want convergence. Sorry, it is your services. You, and it will help you. We promise. And uh, okay, so. Uh, we have convergence update, uh, which uh, uh, I'm I'm referring the the right side of the 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 three items, right? So the three item will be like 
a significant drawdown of memory usage. Uh, the left side, the right side of the diagram is actually not for convergence, but it is a diagram to show about uh, what the improvement in latency. Uh, and the, the memory issue is always the, uh, we're trying to target uh, not just for a very big large scale of the OpenStack environment, we're trying to target like even when you just have a single uh, heat engine node, uh, heat node, uh, we hope that entire convergencing can work for you, not create so much burden. And uh, we have like uh, fixed the uh, update cancel error, so you, you, your environment might be operated at the same time by two users try to update the entire stake. Uh, you, I mean your entire resources, and now it's, they won't, there should not be any problems to do so. Uh, also, we have like uh, resource property uh, reality, that is, uh, when you're trying to update your resources, uh, usually you will feel like heat just keep, uh, just blindly update it. But right now, that it, it is a, a feature that almost complete, that you can update the, the stake and you will actually go check the, the actually reality of the property of that resource and, and see if the properties is uh, actually is some difference with the, the template you're trying to update, and then it will actually send it the uh, update request when it compared to your live uh, uh, resource property. So that way that you can make sure manage of your stack more uh, smartly. And, and uh, actually we uh, have other versions of the, the, the entire PowerPoint, but uh, so the, the right side of the diagram is for like, uh, it actually for a test, it, a test diagram in, uh, in, uh, for triple project, and about that the, the heat we're using is uh, for uh, uh, latency stake, which is uh, not non-convergence, but uh, you can see the memory drop down, drop down, and then you can probably update the Sure, yeah, so uh, towards the left-hand side there, you can see kind of during Newton development, um, the, the complexity of the triple O templates was increasing and the memory usage in heat was, was increasing with it. Um, and stuff we did around the end of the Newton uh, cycle, as you can see, knocked that right back. Uh, and since then, it's, it's been pretty flat. So the, the increase in complexity in triple O is not resulting in the same increase in memory usage in heat. Uh, th there's, a, there's one little bump there towards the end. Um, and there's a little, the, the kind of gray shaded period is not entirely representative because Triple O changed their config to use fewer um, engines so it uses less memory. But um, so the, the first jump there in the middle of the graph is, is an artifact of that. Uh, the, the second one is due to a change in Triple O. Um, but yeah, it, memory usage is kind of under control now, it would appear. Um, so, the, and this is the legacy case. The, an update on the convergence memory usage is um, we, d we don't have a graph like this for yet because we're not running a convergence job in Triple O, but we're probably going to start soon. Um, but towards the end of last year, convergence was using roughly double the amount of memory in Triple uh, It's now 15 to 20% or 15 to 25% sorry, higher than, than the legacy. Um, so we've, we've knocked the convergence right back and that's with still quite a lot of uh, work that's kind of been proposed in Pike but hasn't landed yet, so we're hoping to bring it down even further. Thanks. Okay, so uh, uh, we have a lot of discussions about the convergent next step, which uh, are very much uh, needed for like a uh, we we very urgent. We very desire to have like user feedback or operator feedback to to guide our uh, developers to to know what to do. So we also have like a, a large uh, large orchestration stake sessions, and uh, we would like to uh, invite everyone to join if you have any ideas about the large scale because the convergence is about to auto, uh, auto, do the automatic to your uh, environment to manage those resources, and which we, which the next, we, we call the next generation is still under developing. Uh, if you can 
putting your effort or your uh, any of your ideas, which will be very ideally, uh, will very great, it will very uh, appreciate. And we talk about automatic, so uh, I'm hand over to Zen, and he will talk more about uh, what is like the use cases and a lot of the thing, new things that cool things that we've been doing. So, okay. here now. Thanks. So this, um, this slide is a thing that if you saw my uh, talk in Barcelona, you'll be kind of familiar with already. We did a demo there that was just kind of hacked up script because the heat resources weren't ready yet. Um, but one thing I worked on during Okada was to get heat resources for all this stuff set up. Uh, so this is, this is an auto healing um, stack. So basically you have a heat template which creates a Nova server. It also creates an aid alarm. Zakar queue, uh, Zakar subscription, which triggers uh, Mistral workflow, which is also created in the template. Uh, and so what this basically does is heat, heat, you go heat stack create, sets all of that up. Um, aid uh, is listening for events from Nova on the Oslo messaging bus. Um, and if it, you, you can configure what events you listen for, but the, uh, this one's listening for a stop, um, error, delete, um, and that triggers an alarm in aid. Uh, aid can deliver its alarms to a Zakar queue. Um, Zakar subscriptions can tri trigger a Mistral workflow, and the Mistral workflow got, calls back to Heat and says, uh, hey, we got an event on this server. Uh, it's, it's gone, it's dead. Um, uh, so you use the resource mark unhealthy command. Uh, and then just do a heat stack update with the, uh, the minus minus existing option, which is basically keep the same template, keep the same parameters, um, don't change anything, but, but do another stack um, update. And because the resource has been marked unhealthy, uh, when that stack update goes through, it's gonna say, oh, this, this resource is unhealthy, it needs to be replaced. And so it will create a replacement server um, update all the other resources that are necessary in the stack because they depend on that server ID. So it, it updates the, the uh, workflow config and that kind of thing. And, and you're ready to go again. Um, so if you have another failure, it will, it will handle that. So all, all the resources for that are, are available in Okada. Um, the URL at the bottom there, you can find the template for that um, on on the OpenStack uh, heat templates repo. Uh, and this is kind of how we would like to, to do more things in the future. So we're giving, every application is a special snowflake, right? It's, every application has got its own way of wanting to heal itself after a failure or whatever. Um, so we don't want to implement a bunch of stuff that's in heat, that's hard coded in Python that doesn't work for your application. Uh, we want to give you pluggable tools to say, uh, okay, here's an event, you, you deal with this. Like, you can configure as a user, not as, a, as an operator, um, how you want to handle the event. So you can write your own Mistral workflow to do whatever it is you need. You know, if you don't want it to auto heal, but you want it to just send you an email and stop and wait, um, so that you can check on whether you really want to replace that server. You can totally do that in the Mr. Workflow. Um, and that will probably tie in also to, uh, some of you might remember we were talking one of the evolutions of the convergence architecture. Uh, we said maybe in the future we'll continuously monitor all of the resources in your stack and any time one of them changes we'll immediately go replace it. And I don't, I don't think that's probably the right model because not everyone wants to replace the resource as soon as heat decides it's failed. But what you can do is you can set up a Mistral workflow which does that. Uh, you can put it on a timer. There's a Mistral cron trigger resource which just runs a workflow on a timer. And it can go back to heat and say, okay, go check everything and see if it's, it's all there. So that's something you can set up yourself. Um, and that's, that's probably the way we're gonna move increasingly in the future is we'll use other OpenStack projects to make, to allow you to do whatever you want in a flexible way. That's, that's kind of our, our 
overarching philosophy, I think, going forward. I just said going forward. I can't believe that. And here's the graph again. <laughs> um, skipping past that since we already talked about it. Uh, so there is, um, there is one known limitation with heat. Um, I, I, it's actually a limitation with Keystone. Uh, basically, as most of you probably know, heat makes heavy use of Keystone trusts uh, to allow us to uh, impersonate the user. So when you go back and heat needs to change something later, it needs a token that, that you provided uh, only with, with the API request. So if it doesn't have a token, we use a trust to come back later. Yes, for specific resources, that's yeah. right. Thanks, Steve. But, and that works great. And also, Keystone Federation works great, but they don't work together. Uh, and, and the reason is that the, with Keystone Federation, you don't get a list of roles, or Keystone doesn't get a list of roles from the other Keystone. Um, so we're, we're trying to work that one out with Keystone folks. Um, but for now, you are limited to if you're using federation, then you can't use any of the resources that require trusts. Uh, if you're using trust, you can't use federation. So that's, that's one unfortunate limitation which will yeah. hopefully be resolved in the future. So the roadmap for Pike. Uh, we've got a lot of good stuff happening, actually. Um, Python 3.5 support, uh, that is more or less done, I believe, right, Rika? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's, that's something that all projects are working on the cycle. Uh, the Neutron segment resource that uh, has landed so you can use routed networks, uh, if that is your thing, uh, that is definitely coming in Pike. Uh, neutron VLAN trunk ports, so if you're using 802.1Q on Nova servers, so this is implemented Neutron, there was no heat resource for it. Uh, that is in review at the moment. That should have no trouble landing. Uh, custom resources managed by Wistra workflows, so this is an interesting one. Uh, so basically, there'll be a, I can't remember the name, but I think it's external resource. Um, and you can, define, you can define what happens to the resource on create, update, delete uh, with a Mistral workflow. So you, you'll have a create workflow, an update workflow, a delete workflow. You don't have to define all, them all, they're all optional, but uh, you, can, you can define several workflows. And so if you have some external thing that's kind of complex and needs to, needs to be done in a certain order or it uses uh, APIs that are external to OpenStack uh, that, that heat can't access and you're not an operator so you can't put in a custom plugin, then you can do this, again, entirely from user space, uh, calling this for workflows. So that is in review at the moment. Uh, it's, there's a little bit more work to do on it, but it is coming along. Uh, a couple of new intrinsic functions, uh, make URL. So one of the things I've noticed is like just about every template has an output where you concatenate together IP addresses and paths and stuff to make a URL. And it's kind of a pain because if, you know, if your service has an IPv6 address, then you have to make sure you put brackets around it. But if it doesn't, then you have to make sure that you don't. And, and all this stuff. Uh, so make URL uh, intrinsic function basically handles all that for you. Um, so it's a lot tidier. You avoid the, um, the mess of string concatenation. Uh, list concat unique. Uh, so that's basically get, get two lists and get all the unique uh, things in there and put them into a single list coming out. Some internal architecture stuff, which probably only really affects people who are writing custom template plugins, which I suspect there aren't too many of in this room, but if you are, um, the good news is that it will be very clear from now on which parts of the plugin interface uh, you are allowed to override, or you're allowed to call from your template plugin, and which parts are kind of just internal to heat and subject to change at any time. Uh, so the, the downside of that is that if you were using some of that uh, internal only stuff and you didn't realize, uh, your, your template plugin will break. Um, but again, that's only for operators who are deploying custom template plugins. 
Uh, it, at some point in the future, we would like to make the same kinds of improvements to the resource plugins, but that will be a, a much longer process and giving people plenty of time to, to make sure that their, their existing resource plugins uh, don't break. Uh, stable attribute values. So this is, um, this is one that we probably should have done a long time ago. So right now, if you have a resource and, and say you have an output from your template which is grabbing an attribute from that resource, uh, like the IP address or something, when you go show stack and try to get the outputs, uh, it will go make calls to Nova to get the latest IP address and return that to you. Which is one, silly, because the IP address shouldn't change after you created the server, and two, it's really slow if you have a thousand servers. Uh, so projects like... Um, um, Magnum. Yeah, Magnum. That, yeah, Sahara. They're, they're creating a large number of Nova servers, and they go, they go ask for all the IP addresses of all their servers, and it takes them like several minutes to, to get them all. So what we're going to do from Pike onwards is when we create the resource, we will get all of the attributes that are referenced in outputs or in other resources, and we'll store the value in the database, and we'll never need to go get it from Nova again. So that means when you go show outputs, that should be really quick from now on. The, the downside of that is if you were relying on getting some live data by doing that, um, so if you were changing stuff behind heat's back and expecting that to show up through the heat uh, show outputs, um, first of all, don't do that. And second of all, you will break. Um, for that reason, we're only doing this for convergence. So if you had the convergence engine turned on, you will get that new behavior. If you're still on the legacy path, uh, you, will, you will get the legacy behavior. Uh, and just a reminder, convergence is the default starting with Newton. So if you haven't disabled it since Newton, uh, you now have uh, new stacks will be created with convergence. Uh, so that, that's the other thing is convergence status goes with the stack, not, not necessary with the configuration option. Uh, but once the configuration option is on, then new stacks get created in convergence. And we have a migration tool uh, that you can migrate legacy ones over. Uh, that's the heat manage command, has that tool. Uh, memory and performance improvements for convergence. We talked about this a little bit um, before with the, with the graph, but um, which again was not a graph of convergence, but, but we're down from double memory usage to 15 to 25% more. Uh, there was a lot of database stuff that we've improved, so convergence was pretty heavy on the database, and we've dialed that back a lot. Um, part, part of it is, is just the architecture is, does use the database a lot, but uh, it should be considerably less overhead uh, uh, on top of what we were already doing before than, than it was in in Newton or Okada. Uh, large stacks uh, have had some, especially like software deployments, when you've got like a large number of software deployments all going onto one server at the same time, there was a lot of contention in the database uh, and we didn't have, uh, some of the retry stuff we were doing in there was not working very well. Uh, so that should be improved in Pike, so uh, you should ha see less problems with database contention with large stacks. And the last one that, um, that Rico kind of touched on before is uh, a, a lot of the code is now in place to, you know, typically when, when you update a heat stack, it's comparing the, current, the new template that you're giving it with, with what it thinks the current template is. Uh, and so we're going to add an option. It's going to be a command line option so the user can decide when they do an update. Do I want to compare against the previous stack or do I actually want to compare with, with reality? And he will go out and ask the other services, hey, what's the status of this resource? Um, and, and it'll compare against that instead of comparing against 
uh, what it thinks it did last time. Uh, so that's, um, the, again, it's optional for the user. It's, it's not super well tested yet, uh, but it's, it's going to be available in Pike so you can start trying it out. Um, and, and probably we'll have a few bugs to iron out, but it's, it's something that's going to be, hopefully we'll move towards that in the future, and once we have that, it's going to open up uh, some of the, the other things we wanted to do in the future with convergence, um, with phase two and that kind of stuff, where uh, not necessarily continuously um, updating stuff, but, but we can improve the architecture significantly to, um, to be even more efficient than it is. So obviously, um, we appreciate um, any help. Uh, there's, there's a number of ways to contribute. Um, and yeah, we'd be happy to, <laughs> to see anyone in the room if you, if you want to contribute. Um, Come hang out in IRC, um, you know, review specs, blueprints, raise blueprints, um, submit patches, reviews, all yeah. of those. Very welcome. Yeah, we actually need all the re all the like reviewers, and you, you, we need users, we need operators, yeah. we need uh, we need anyone like you want to help, and any crazy ideas, <laughs> and we will be fine. We won't bite. We're used to crazy ideas. <laughs> You don't give us idea or we're using all the crazy idea we want and we don't care. <laughs> Alright, is that last slide? Yep, so it is. Alright. Questions? Who's got questions? Yes. Uh, you might be using a microphone so others can hear you. Yeah, you? so this session's being recorded, so if, if you all can count yeah. the microphone so that people watching at home can like understand. Uh, so so as an operator, uh, you say um, that we require service like uh, Zakar and Mistral. And as an operator, I use Red Hat uh, uh, Director. So my question is, when you think this will be available in this platform for, for using auto healing? Excellent question. Um, so first of all, it's not required to use Mistral's car, but if you if you want to make that available to your users, um, then yes, obviously. Um, I don't have an answer on the time frame for that. Uh, it, it is something we're looking at, um, but we, as far as director goes, we don't have an announcement. Um, I, both of those services are being used in the director under cloud. Um, I believe the stuff. Uh, is there to install them, but it's not, it's not a supported part. Um, and, and I can't give you a time frame right now on, on when that will happen, but yeah. So I, I think our time is up, so uh, we'll just close these sessions and leave all the other questions to uh, after the session. So thank everybody joining and hope to see you this entire week. Thank you. Thanks.